Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at this exercise or a CPA simulation that covers the concepts of earnings per share. Now for this exercise or CPA simulation, I can turn it into a multiple choice and ask you a few questions or I can keep it as a simulation and ask you to complete the weighted average number of shares outstanding. I can ask you to compute EPS. I can ask you to compute only how much dividend is is in arrear or how much dividend do you have to pay? So there are many questions I can ask about the simulation. First, I'm gonna introduce sim this simulation as a simple exercise with no stock split or no stock dividend. Then I'm gonna introduce the concept of stock split and how do we handle the concept, concept of stock split, which is basically the same as handling the concept of a stock dividend. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. We have preferred stocks, 50,000 shares, $100 par value, 8%, cumulative, not convertible, worth 5 million. Well, few things we have to be aware here right from the beginning. The preferred stock are cumulative. What does that mean? It means we have to deduct the preferred dividend from net income before we compute earnings per share. So simply put, we're going to have net income. We have to deduct the preferred stock dividend. And why do we have to? Because the preferred is cumulative. Whether the company declared the dividend or not, since it's a cumulative, we have to deduct this. And once we deduct the preferred stock, what's left is net income to common shareholders and this is the net income to common shareholders that we will use in the numerator in order to compute eps so that's important so having this information now you need to understand how much to compute of dividend well here's what we do we have fifty thousand shares and you can do it in two different ways i'm going to show you both ways i would say the dividend is a percentage of par if the par is a hundred dollar the dividend rate is 8%. Each shareholder gets $8. If each shareholder gets $8, we'll take 50,000 shares times $8, and we have to allocate $400,000 to the preferred shareholders. Or, as one student told me once, take all the numbers and multiply them together. 50,000 shares times 100 times 8%, which will give you the same thing. Or, you can take 5 million times 8%. So you need to understand this preferred stock is paying $8 per stock, $8 per stock in preferred dividend. Now we have 50,000 shares. Anyway, you look at it, you wanna make sure you understand it inside out so you understand how to compute this. This is for the preferred. We're gonna assume net income of 25 million and we're gonna use that later. Starting with common shares. Common stock, we started the year with 750,000. And let's assume we end up the year with 750000 In other words, there was no other transaction. What does that mean? Well, if we started with 750 and we had the 750,000 shares for 12 out of 12 months, that's going to be 750 times 1, which is 12 divided by 12, and that's going to be the weighted number of shares outstanding. Then we'll take net income divided by that and get EPS. Well, but that's not what really happened, and that's not what usually happened on the exam. We had 750,000 shares from J January 1st up till May 1st. Well, it means 750,000 shares were outstanding. Now I have to prorate them because they were not outstanding for the whole year, 750. They were outstanding January, February, March, and April because May 1st, something happened. So those shares, I have to prorate them at four divided by 12. Then what happened May 1st? May 1st, I added 300,000 shares to the 750. So starting May 1st, I had 1,050,000 shares and I had those shares for May, June, July, 
hold on a second, then something happened in August. So I had them for 3 divided by 12. I have to prorate them. On, on August 1st, I repurchased, I acquired the treasury stocks. It means I have to deduct 150,000 shares from this. If I deduct 150,000 shares, now I'm down to 900,000 shares. And from August till the end of the year, there was no activity. So August, September, October, November, December, I'm going to have to prorate this by 5 divided by 12. Now 4 plus 3 plus 5, I want to make sure I have 12 months, which is I accounted for this. So this is basically how I prorate the shares. This is the basic idea. And let's take a look at this in a more formal way. So we have the event, days outstanding or time outstanding, shares outstanding, fraction of a year, percentage. We're going to ignore the restatement because there is no stock dividend or stock split for this example. So we started the year January 1st, beginning balance to May 1st. We had shares outstanding 750. The fraction of the year is 412. I would like to compute the percentage to show you the picture from a different perspective. So simply put, here's what I'm going to say. If, if we're looking at a timeline for the first, this is 33% of the year. 33% percent of the year we had 750,000 shares in total but they were only outstanding for 33 percent of the year which is 412 okay then we're going to take this and multiply it by we're going to take this amount multiplied by 412 or 33 percent the weighted average of the 750 is 250,000 then from from May 1st till August 1st, we issue shares. It means the shares will increase. And we had those shares for, for three months outstanding, 1 million and 50. Three months out of the year. So three months out of the year is, you know, 25% of the year. So we'll take 1 million 50 multiplied by the percentage or by the fraction, which is the same thing, will give us equivalent shares of 262,500. Then we reacquire the treasury stocks. It means we deducted specifically 150 were down to 900,000 and those were outstanding for the remaining of the year which is 42 percent again there's some rounding issue but they should add up to 100 percent and that's equal to 375 weighted average number of shares then now just to make sure i make i want to make sure that i added all 12 month and to confirm my percentages I'm, i want to make sure i do that now on the cpa exam you don't have the time to do that if you are giving such a simulation i just want to make sure you kind of have a ballpark where if something get out, out out of whack you can spot it immediately now good now i have i have the number of shares outstanding i'm ready to compute my eps remember we said net income is 25 million Net income is 25 million. This should be giving to you. This is net income. Preferred dividend. We computed the preferred dividend earlier. We said 400,000. So net income minus the preferred dividend gives us net income available to common shareholders. Well, if we'll take this number divided by the common shares outstanding, and if my math is right, 24,600 divided by 24,600,000 divided by 887,500, we have EPS, let's see, 24,600,000, my calc, I just want to confirm it, divided by 877,500, and that's going to give us this number, approximately 27.72 rounding. Now, this is how we would compute this using this data. Now, the, on the next slide, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same information, except I am going to assume that we have we have a stock split. So the same exact information, assume you had a stock split from October 1st till the end of the year. It should be October 1st till the end of the year. We had a stock split. So after we acquired the treasury stock, we had a stock split. So what do you need to know about this? When we have a stock split, we assume that the stock split happened as of the beginning of the year. It's not an assumption. That's exactly what happened. When you have a stock split, you have to go back and readjust. What does it mean, readjust? It means go back and double your shares for every single event. This is if you have a stock split. If you have a stock dividend, it cover, it's the same concept. If you had a stock dividend, what do you have to do if you have a stock dividend? If you have a stock dividend, what's going to happen is if you have a stock dividend, let's assume 25% stock dividend, you will take the 
average, the weighted average multiplied by 1.25 because you have to increase your shares by 25%. If you have a 40% stock dividend, same thing, multiplied by 1.4, increase the shares by 1.4. But here we have a stock dividend, it means you're doubling, basically you're doubling your shares. So what do we have to do? Well, exactly the same thing, except what's going to happen is this. There's going to be a restatement. And what's the restatement? The restatement is for the stock dividend. Why is it two? Two because we're doubling. So now what you do is you'll take 750,000 times 33% or times 412. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing, 33% times two. So notice now the weighted average for those 750,000 shares is 500,000. Hold on a second. How? Well, because when we looked at the prior session, the prior exercise, it was 250. Now, since we did a stock split and the st stock split is effective as of the beginning of the year, I multiplied by two. Well, guess what? The same thing's gonna occur for the 1,050,000. Same thing, 1,050,000, same computation, times 312 times two. Same thing for the 900,000, because anything that happened prior to that stock split, remember, anything happened prior, you would apply the stock split or you would apply the stock dividend, anything prior. Now, if something happened after the stock, after the stock dividend, let's assume on 11, um, 11 one we re we either reacquired shares or we issued new shares the stock split don't apply because the stock split happened to the existing shares not the new event now what we do is we compute the weighted average number of shares uh, uh, one million seven hundred and one million seven hundred and seventy five thousand we'll take 25 million minus the preferred dividend we have net income applicable to common shareholders we'll take net income applicable to shareholders 24 million 600 divided by 1 million 775 and we have earnings per share of 13 dollars and 86 cent now computing earnings per share is an extremely important concept whether you are an accounting student, CPA candidate, CMA candidate. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional le lectures, exercises, multiple choice, true, false, notes. That's going to help you understand this topic. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.